I don't want to hear no excuses. If he needs an excuse, he should have moved up. Most fighters you run into have to lose a lot of weight to make weight. Nobody walks around at their fight weight. Even me, I'm a big welterweight. Me and Kel Brook are probably the same size. I walk around 170 plus. I have to drop a lot of weight too. I don't see that as a factor at all and I'm not going to rely on weight drain or him having to lose weight as a factor in the fight. Those are the words of Errol Spence talking about his upcoming showdown with IBF welterweight king, Kel Brook. Now Spence is clearly in a very confident and bullish mood here. He wants to head off any type of excuses that Brook or Eddie Hearn or his fans may come out with should Errol Spence defeat him and lift that IBF world weight world title. Because people have been talking about Brook's weight pre-fight, but I think rightly so, because there is a historical precedent for fighters who have gone up in weight, particularly when they've gained a lot of weight, who come back down and are just not the same after coming back down in weight. And people will point to examples like Oscar De La Hoya when he fought Manny Pacquiao. Other examples like Roy Jones Jr. After he beat John Ruiz, he came back down and fought Antonio Tava. An extreme example may be Chris Bird, although he, you know, that, that's extreme because Chris Bird moved up from whatever he was, super middleweight or light heavyweight early in his career to heavyweight and he spent the majority of his career at heavyweight and then later on in his career he came back down to I think light heavyweight and he just got destroyed at that weight but that was an extreme example okay in Kel Brook's case he's moved up two weight divisions to fight Triple G he's now coming back down to 147 pounds so again when you look at history fighters often find it difficult to come back down so it's a legitimate uh Concern, it has to be. But at the same time, there's a lot of validity to what Errol Spence is saying. He also has to cut weight. He also comes down from very, very high amounts of weight, 170 pounds plus. I mean, the guy is walking around a light heavyweight, <laughs> you know, which just goes to show you what a complete farce the weight divisions in boxing really are, you know, particularly these days when we have weigh-ins happening way, you know, 24 hours plus before an actual fight. So yeah, I take on board what Errol Spence is saying, but at the same time, there's a historical precedent for fighters having trouble when they come back down in weight. And I guess Errol Spence's issue is going to be if he wins the fight, he wants to make sure that people know it was his ability that won him to fight. It wasn't Kell Brook's weight, it was his ability. Because people will view it, certain people, if they want to, will view it through a certain lens if Kell Brook loses. Especially those people who are adamantly picking Kell Brook to win. I doubt if Kell Brook gets destroyed by Errol Spence, that those people are going to give Errol Spence full credit. They'll say, oh, Brook was drained. I'm predicting that most of them are going to say that. So <laughs> it is what it is. Spence just has to concentrate on the long term because there will be, no matter what happens, there will be some people making excuses if Errol Spence beats Kilbrook. But a legacy is not built on one fight, certainly not an all-time great legacy or you know, even just a strong resume to make yourself the number one in the division is not built off one fight. That's why I dispute the idea that Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight in the world. He's only fought one of the top heavyweights. He can legitimately be considered the champion. Yes. The lineal champion, the legitimate champion. I agree with that. But is he the best in the world? He hasn't proved it. He's fought one guy, one style, one time. In terms of the top heavyweights. Uh, <laughs> longevity is where you really prove what you're really all about. And that's what Errol Spence needs to concentrate on. Forget about what, People may say if he beats Kell Brook, look at the fights after that. The winner of Keith Furman, Danny Garcia. I mean, you know, there's possible fights out there with Tim Bradley, Pacquiao, Amir Khan. If he manages to get past Kell Brook, 
So just look at it as a stepping stone and don't worry about the excuses that people come out with. People will always have excuses and critiques for anything that you do. So yeah, those are my thoughts. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Let me know how you feel. It's happening, I'm out.